Um, now, this is kind of an alternative way of looking at um, how to approach a design problem. This is um, a parrot. Um, it's our parrot on our boat in Maastricht, and, and um, it's, old, it's an old plastic parrot, and what's that got to do with living islands? Um, well, a lot to do with it. It, it. I want to tell you about a problem. I want to tell you about um, my attempts at solu solving this problem and, and what happened next. Um, this is the problem. This is what we face every year um, after a flood. Um, this is the, the River Maas, or the Meurs, as it's known here in Maastricht, and this is plastic waste, and it's pretty bad. Um, it's plastic in all forms. It's domestic. It's, 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 it's industrial. It's, it's, it's disgusting, basically. We, we have a big problem, um, and this is nothing to do with living. This is obviously the planet saying something's wrong. Um, the planet didn't invent plastic by the way we did, and it's a problem we need to solve. Um, I, I, I like to think of this as Christmas trees. What this is is a, is a, is a, a photo I took of, the, of trees along the Mars after, a clear, after this clear up where we spent all this money clearing stuff up from land. It cost us a fortune, or it cost, cost the city of Maastricht apparently 100,000 euros a year. It didn't work. Um, of course, there are other approaches. This is in VZ where concrete banks are characteristic of the treatment of, the, of rivers in industrialized nations. Plastic doesn't stick to concrete. Um, this for me is dead, and it's, it's very soul-destroying when you see a dead river. Um, of course, I wanted to see something that was more alive, something more like this, where um, a, a, beautiful, a beautiful experience in, in life where you, where you come across nature in, in, its, in its full beauty. Um, so, and this is an island in, on a lake in Maastricht where I spend a lot of my time, um, we spend a lot of our time messing around, basically. Um, one of those things that I wanted to do on this island was to, well, I'll come back to this, I'll tell you about this, the approach to clearing up rubbish. Now, like I said, it's from land. What we see is people putting a lot of effort in, taking their materials, putting them on containers, taking those, those containers, those trucks, and then take their waste, and it's then burnt. No energy recovery, and no heat, heat recovery, it's just burnt. Now, I live on boats, I've lived on boats for years, and why don't you approach things from the river? You know, why not, why not start by at least putting stuff on ships and maybe collecting stuff for energy recovery? And of course, that's one of my passions. But another passion has been putting life back on the river, and this is where living islands come in. And I've, I've been creating very simple living islands for a number of years by taking old pallets and wooden things and putting plastic bottles in them and, and twigs of willow and other wetland species. And the ducks love them, and they sit on them, and, and the boat owners are happy because the ducks don't sit on their boats and make a mess. But what's this got to do with plastic? Well, the plastic waste, I thought, hey, why don't I combine a living system of how these trees catch rubbish so I built a, a net made of old plastic bottles and, and willow branches and stuff. And I thought, OK, I'm going to do something with this. Because doing is more interesting and it's much more empowering than just sitting around worrying about plastics. So I dragged this, this net up and down the lake and up and down the river and had some fun with it, actually. It was, it was, it was interesting. It, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea was, was great. There was no plastic around. And the plastic only goes, passes through when there's a flood, right? Um, so I abandoned my, 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 my little island and left it to one side and a few days later I came back and there's a duck making a nest on my island and I thought, yeah, hey, the, this come around. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to build a duck's nest actually, I'm trying to catch plastic waste but the ducks happen to like it. So what can I do? How can I develop this a bit further and make something of it? Um, now the local harbour, of course, they saw my little floating island duck's nest and they got rid of it because it was a mess and I took it, the whole thing out of the container and put it back on the lake next to my boat where they couldn't touch it, and I got more ducks nesting. And now kids um, who visit the harbour have been amazed to see ducks right next to the boats for, where they can see life growing, and it's just fascinating watching that process of life. So I thought, I'm going to get big, I'm going to think big, and uh, I'm going to make bigger islands, I'm going to grow islands the, throughout the whole summer. Yeah, this is, and people thought I was completely mad. But I did it, and that's the cement factory in the background where they burn all the plastic waste. And uh, that's, this is my, my experiment. Now, as I was 
traveling around on the river, of course, I've seen more and more of this. Now, if anybody knows the works of wildlife, you know this, this, um, it, this always the unexpected happens. And of course, this is the work of the beaver, which has just come back on the mast, which I'm very happy about, by the way. I'm really pleased as an environmentalist to see beaver. Of course, what did that mean for my island? I came back the next day and the island was, had been eaten. <laughs> um, I went to visit the beaver and I wanted to have a talk and find out what was going on. And, and this is a beaver lodge, they're huge. And they take rubbish and they build islands. And I thought, hey, we've got something in common, let's, let's work on this. But I really wasn't really sure what it was going to be. So, but the island concept stayed. So, you know, with this planet's an island. Um, I, I wanted to work out how can we use materials, how can we design in living materials and take out the dead, the plastic, and, 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 and I actually thought of building a floating structure, like a boat that I could live on. And everyone said I was mad, and, but maybe I am. Um, but a few years ago, uh, recently, I, 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 this has stayed in my mind of, of, of having island communities, people living and interacting with the river. And this is something that's becoming more and more attractive. What was previously the, the, the realm of pirates and really people that you know, had parrots on their boats uh, has become mainstream. And this is a Dutch architect who has created an autonomous home. This is completely an island concept in my, in, in my idea of, of what's positive. It has its own electricity supply, it supplies its own water, it, it's independent. Of course, I wanted to have trees sprouting out of it and stuff growing. And I came across, I, I went, uh, had an internet search and looked and I found, came across Marcel, Marcel Cabera and others who, who create structures out of living trees and they're fantastic. And why not? Why not start thinking about design that looks more like this? Um, it's far more creative. So if you're around next summer, come and check out the river. Maybe you'll see some crazy islands floating around. Thank you very much.